Think not, Lord came to peace this earth. He came with a sword. Shalom in the name of the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night Watchman. Time of Night Watch Time. Commentary, information, Bible, prophecy, and stuff. Woo! What a week. What a time. I can feel it in the air. Something is coming. Mm, could it be the Messiah or just another great blessing? Just. <laughs> anyway, something came up this past week. You know, people inspire me in light of their, I don't know, their journey, their walk, their conversation. You know, I never know. But I thought I, I explore this kind of subject matter. It becomes pretty relevant in the body of Christ today. And the key is self-portrayal of idolatry. Yeah, it sounds like people are into the, they're into themselves, man. Which is, I guess, no surprise in light of circumstance. Uh, consider there are scriptures pertaining in the warnings of these times and how people are going to be like. Yes, I know that one picture is very gross. But you know, that's kind of how, how God looks at it. It's gross. It's ugly. It's nasty. Some people say, well, that's really cool. But, you know, it depends what, what who you, well, we'll get into that. So it's basically a self-portrayal of idolatry. And uh, let's see what the Bible says about that. Of course, we go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 3 it says, moreover, understand this. In the Achalit Hayamim, which is the end times, will come trying times. Two people, it says two, people will be self-loving. Oh, yeah. Is it, if it feels good, it must be good, right? Oh, yeah. So let's just do away with God's laws and commandments because, you know, that doesn't feel as good as, as what you get into. So when it comes to worshiping of oneself, you know, we'll look at the areas of vanity. You go to the book of Ecclesiastes, it really goes into vanity. Vanity of vanities. Hmm? Yeah, there's a good book to read on that. And vanity is inflated pride in oneself or one's appearance. In other words, conceit. I'm so adorable today. I'm so good looking. Oh, this is so beautiful. So great. Mm, I'm so wonderful. Kiss, kiss. Anyway, something that is vain, empty, or valueless. Uh, that's kind of like the, the bottom line on that. I mean, I mean, how many shallow, vain, empty, valueless people do you meet out there? Is that it's like, is that it? Is this, is this what makes you who it is? Again, on, on the very topic of the of vanity and self-elevation, uh, we go into the thing I noticed as of late, victimism. Oh, yeah, victimism seems to be plaguing the world, if not the United States of America, especially the subject of fear. Hmm. Boy, as if the United States doesn't have enough problems. But the victimism. So I looked this up, of course. Victim mentality is an acquired personality trait in which a person tends to recognize it and or consider themselves a victim of the ne negative actions of others and to behave as if it were the case in the face of contrary evidence of such circumstances. Victim mentality depends on clear thought processes and attribution. In some cases, those with a victim mentality have in fact been the victim of wrongdoing by others or have otherwise suffered misfortune through no fault of their own. Or in some cases, it is of their own making. However, such misfortune does not necessarily imply that one will respond by developing a pervasive and ununiversal victim mentality where one frequently or constantly perceives oneself to be a victim. Yeah, so you know, where, where is this going? You're probably asking where it's coming. Of course, the symbol, that is basically a picture supposed to be that of Lot's wife, you know, turning into a pillar of salt. So, where, where, you know, what does this victim mentality go to? Well, let's, let's take her into the more biblical slash spiritual point of view my suffering is greater than your suffering so basically what you're saying you're elevating yourself above god you're elevating yourself above jesus it's kind of like self-martyrdom that's what victimism is you basically made yourself into your own god mm -hmm. think about that oh i mean my parents my parents were great for for victimism see they they thought they could push their victimism onto me, and I just wasn't interested in it. I thought it was crap. Can I say that? I just did. But anyway, so it, it's just that. The whole victimism thing, it's depressing. It's moronic. It's stupid. I mean, people suffer throughout the ages. They've been victims in one form or the other, but is that what the crucifixion was all about? Be a victim? I, I, I just don't see that in Scripture. But, you know, a lot of this all comes stems from unforgiveness. Interesting enough, in Matthew 6, 15, it says, But if you do not forgive others their offenses, your heavenly Father will not forgive yours. Yeah. See, that's where all this victimism comes to. It's like, oh, they did this to me, they did that to me, bad, bad, ooh, ooh. 
I suffered. I mean, I always hear the Holocaust. Being Jewish, I always heard about the Holocaust. Like, being Jewish means Holocaust. Well, you know, anytime there's a Holocaust, if you know anything biblically about Holocaust, you realize that God pours his wrath upon his people because they're sinning against the Holy God. That's what Holocaust essentially means. They don't tell you that, but, you know, me, me, I'm victim. I, I suffered. I, I suffered. Let's go pour ashes on ourselves, which is probably not a bad idea. We're wearing sackcloth at that point. Uh, uh, just, it's, yeah. It's just some peep things that I'm more sensitive to than others. This is clearly one of them. Anyway, so bottom line is, don't be a jerk. Look at Psalms 1, 4 through 6. It goes, not so the wicked, who are like chaff driven by the wind. For this reason, the wicked won't stand up to the judgment, nor will sinners at the gathering of the righteous. For Adonai watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Of course, I'm reading out a complete Jewish Bible. I'm taking sense to that because people seem to hate Jews for no reason at all. But hey, what do I know? The general consensus is that just don't be a jerk. Get over yourself. Well, what's the point of the cross? I mean, where, where is your fruit? We talked about this in a previous video about where's the fruit? If I'm to believe that you are truly following Christ, where is your fruit? You think victimism is going to give testimony to God's grace, God's miracle, God's salvation? Hmm. So as being a follower of Christ, no one can be slave to two masters. For you will either hate the first and love the second, or scorn the second and be loyal to the first. You can't be a slave to both God and money. Or material goods for that matter. I mean, choose who you serve this day. And we're going to continue to point out that that choice. You've given a choice. Even as a person is born again Christian. Could even now your salvation may be at stake. You can continue to perpetuate a lie. You continue to perpetuate a sin. And you are totally unrepented to your ways. Instead of going into his way. So the bottom line is who do you serve? Do you serve the devil? Or do you serve God? It's a choice question. I mean, supposedly you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord. See, supposedly you've been uh, uh, experienced the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Supposedly you've heard the voice of God. Who do you serve this day? Is it the devil or is it God? Because many people out there, even those who are in question about their Christianity, they're totally into self-gratification. In one form or another, while they watch pornography on on their cell phones, or have Dabai's tattooed, or into other sexual deviancy, or just looking for material goods to to prove who they are, totally missing the point is that's not what God gave us when it comes to self identity. Identity. Interesting enough. Look about this. In, in was it uh, Corinthians 15:10? But by God's grace, I am what I am and his grace towards me was not in vain on the contrary I have worked harder than all of them although it was not I but the grace of God with me we're so busy looking for identity but the identity is that from God who are you what are you I mean is your identity taken off that of Satan himself or is your identity that from God you know, this is the big question you have to ask yourself is this. Are you truly following the way? Or are you basically going your own way? Are we all like sheep who have gone astray? You know, again, the question of who am I? Are we victims or are we victors? I mean, it's, it's quite enticing apparently to, to edify yourself above God. Isn't that the same thing what happened at the tree? What are you afraid of the taking it from the tree? Are well, you afraid you become like God? I mean, that's what he, God's afraid of. And yeah, look what we do in our disobedience. We would rather serve the serpent than serve the Almighty God through Jesus Christ. So are you victim or are you victor? I mean, the choice is yours. You can break the bonds through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ or continue to perpetuate the sin in your life and act like a victim. <clears throat> Which, sadly enough, you read in the book of Romans, how God will even give people over to such reprobate minds. And we continue. 
The question is, who are you? Are you a slave or are you a servant? Again, it's a choice. It's a matter of principle. It's a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, it's a matter of how we live and how we look at things in life according to Jesus Christ. Do we live by the word or do we follow after the ways of the world? Again, it's a choice. Because the choice is yours. The choice of going to heaven or going to hell. It is your choice. Is your identity from heaven or is your identity from hell? Because Christ is risen. And because of such death is where there is no sting. So why perpetuate sin? Why continue in the ways of victimism, which is not of God, but salvation and victory of the cross is ours? In Jesus' name, amen. This is Time of Night, Watchmen. Time of Night, Watch Time. Comments on information, Bible prophecy stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. And remember, there's only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' name, amen.